Okay, so we define the, the inner product, and the moment that we define the inner product is that uh, we can also uh, look at the following. So the inner product between n two vectors a and b. So this can be uh, this is equal to the magnitude of a times magnitude of b times uh, cosine theta. Okay, so let's assume for a moment. Uh, let's assume for a moment that we have some uh, some vectors. In this case, we just selected the two-dimensional uh, plane or the Cartesian coordinate system. So this is the. So here we have the Cartesian coordinate system, and uh, let's come up also with another vector, something like this. So first of all, let's try, let's call this one, what is this, A, B, C, B, yeah, let's do A times B. If we do A times B, what do we find? So first of all, let's not forget, this is an inner product. <coughs> this inner product. This is a, uh, this is a magnitude of a, which at the same time, this is equal to the square root of inner product. This is magnitude of b, which is the square root of inner product also. Okay, but when you say inner product, it is this inner product, a with a, here we have b, with B. Then, okay, so let's let's move ahead. Sorry, this is no, this is uh, oh, come on. Uh, wait a second. Maybe it's not. Uh, this might be. Let's leave it like this. This for a moment. I was just trying to say that these all three, they are the same thing, they are all equivalent, okay? Let's give it like this, and then again, we say that A, inner product of A and B, is equal to the magnitude of A, which is square root of A A, times the square root of B B. Uh, yes, you are right. That's true. Yeah, this is inner product. That's, that's true. Anyway, so uh, and then let's find what is a. A times b is that we calculate the a transpose. And by the way, let's try to identify what is a. One, two. Huh? Two, one. two, one. B. Uh, minus two, minus one. Uh, yes. C one minus two. One minus two. One. B one two. One two. Uh, okay. Uh, yes. So now let's do A times B. What is inner product of A with B? We take the transpose of A, right? Transpose of A times B, and uh, B is minus 2 minus 1. This is equal to the square root of A. Again, it's 2, 1. 
times 2, 1, times the minus 2, minus 1, Times cosinus. Yes, we forgot it. Yes. So, by the way, what you say? This is uh, a is two one. This is wrong. This is wrong. Why did I do it like that? You is wrong. Oh, yeah. no, I forgot. B was this as well. I thought from home. I'm writing the inner product. Okay, this is yeah. You're right. Minus two minus one. This was the B. Yeah. Uh, so let's let's check again. This is well, yeah. why is A transpose and B? Well, that's a little carefully. The the inner product is always the first one is transpose, the second one is it's a column. Yeah, that's the first one. And this is how uh, we defined it. We said that A B inner product is always A transpose times B. So let's uh, let's move on again. Here we have two times minus two minus four plus one times minus one. This is equal to two times two plus one times one times minus two times minus two plus minus one times minus one plus one theta. Then, uh, minus what is this? This is five. Minus five. Minus four, minus, minus four, minus one. Yes, it's minus five. Minus four. Minus five. This is equal to. Times. What is this? Square root of five again. So then we get here. Minus 5 is equal to 5 cosine theta. Means that cosine theta is equal to minus 1. So it looks from here that cosine theta is equal to minus 1. Uh, we can have a look in here. Uh, cosine. It is the this is equivalent to the projection on x axis. So let's call it like this. So cosinus is the conjugate one projection into the positive result. In this case, yes. So sine this corresponds to the projection. On y axis. And uh, in this case, let's assume for a moment. So here, let's assume that we have a circle of radius 1. Okay, let the radius here be equal to 1. And then this will always be, this is cosine. And uh, the projection around, around here, this is equal to. To sign. And then let me think for a moment. So here it looks like the cosine zero degree the cosine ninety degree that means that the projection of that point onto the horizontal line is zero, right? So that's why since the projection is zero, this is what we write. And then the cosine of 180 is minus 1. And then cosine of 270 degrees is again 0. So from here, it looks like we can deduce that the angle theta is equal to 180 degrees. So then, okay, so this is what we see from here. Then let's try another uh, inner product. Let's try A and C. A times C, this would be equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of C times cosine theta. And again, let's not forget that 
the magnitude of the vector is equal to the length of the scale. Okay, so whatever the length of the vector is, that's what we what it should be. For example, what do you expect for the magnitude of A? What do you think is this? Search as he asked. The term Pythagorean, using the Pythagorean theorem. Root of 5, that's true. So A times C, this would be equal then. Let's take A, let's calculate the transpose of A. Transpose of A is 2, 1 times C. C is equal to 1 minus 2, right? Yes. Uh, 1 minus 2. This is equal to what was the magnitude of A? The root of. Square root of 5. It is square root of 5 because we know now, we calculated this here. And also, using the Pythagorean theorem, uh, it would be equal to like this 2 square, 1 uh, right side of the triangle, plus 1 square to get 5, square root of 5. Yes. And then, this is also times another square root of 5, times cosine theta. What is what do we get from this inner product in here? We get two times one is two plus one times minus two. So what do we get here? Zero, zero. zero is equal to five uh, cosine theta, which means that this cosine is equal to zero. So what is the angle? Apparently the angle is 90 degrees. So this angle here, it looks like it's going to be equal to 90 degrees. And the angle between A and B, it was 180. So it looks like this is also another 90 degree. Okay, that's good. Then uh, we can try to find the angle between A and B. So let's try to do this one uh, in B. So now we can go a little faster. This is equal to magnitude of A, sort of pi, times what is the magnitude of D? What is Cosine theta. A with B is equal to what? This is 2 1. Two, one times 1 thing. 2 1 is 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. So here we get 5 is equal to square root of 5, square root of 10, cosine theta. And this is it's equal to 5 square root of 2. Yes, let's try to do this one like this. So this is 5, square root of 5, times square root of 5, plus square root of 2, you are right. So this is equal to 5. So then uh, we can say that... Uh, yes. Uh, I don't know. Is it 45? Yes. Is everything uh, correct here? So if the angle is 45, this will be a very, a very good coincidence. It ends up in being and it can be 45. But this one, we can also write this one inverse function of 1 over square root of 2, which is equal to 45 degrees. Okay, so this was vision uh, is essential inside of the that can be used for the for the vectors. Now we covered also some of the examples. Да, на кедах, да, 
So the angle between A and D, apparently this is uh, 45 degrees, or pi over 4, it's either one. So you're saying it can also be this other angle, right? Yes. Yes, that is two. So this other angle. Yes. So yes, the angle between A and B, A and D in this case, it's either going to be 45 degrees or also 315. Now, we can also remind ourselves that the 90 degree is equal to pi over 2, which is this point, actually. When we have an angle of 180, 180 degrees, this is equal to pi, and so on. But 45 degrees, it's, uh, it's this angle here, which is going to be pi over 4, so 45 degrees, it's equal to pi over 4, which means that 45 degrees is equal to, what is pi? 3.14 divided by 5, put by 4, what is it? 3.14 divided by 4, 0, 0, 31, 7, 28, 3, 34, Another eight zero point seven. What is this? Eight five. Seven eight. Seven eight. Okay. Zero point seventy eight radians. So this forty five degrees is also zero point seventy eight radians, and three hundred and fifteen degrees. This would be equal to two pi, which is the whole angle minus. 0 0.78 radians, 0 0.78, this is all radians. So this 2 pi is 6.28 minus 0 0.78, and this is equal to uh, 6.5. What is it? 6.5 or 5 million bytes? 5.5. Radians. Okay, so anyway, so this is 5.5 radians. So if we want to do uh, a calculation, uh, we multiply this radian with the length of the radius and we find the arc length. You can just see the arc length and so on. Okay, so these were uh, some important uh, examples regarding the, the vectors. Another important uh, concept that we can define it is unit vector. Okay? Unit vector is a vector which has length equal to 1, okay? which means that magnitude is equal to 1. Now, a unit length. So any unit vector, we denote it like this, and we say that uh, so in this case, for any vector A, or let's, let's call it like this. For example, a unit vector, it is in R squared. In R squared, we just mean that we can have a vector that has a pair of numbers. Okay? In this case, the unit vector can be this one. It can be denoted as 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 1. So this is common. So any one of these, they are called unit vectors because the length is uh, one. Now, in R cube, unit vector is one zero one. We can also say minus one over square root of two one over square root of two zero. So because this is also it has a length equal to one. So these are unit vectors, but also, no, this is wrong. This is not a unit vector, this is rather zero. Okay. Because if this is one, the length of this vector is not going to be uh, one, it's going to be square root of two. So other than this, we have zero, minus one, zero. So now we can also define, for any vector A, we can define a unit vector UA, which is a vector of length one along the vector A that we have uh, 
a long, for example, let's pick up this vector 2. <coughs> Well, let's, let's define this one first of all. This is vector A divided by the magnitude of A. And uh, So in this case, the unit vector of, of A, uh, UA, which is a unit length vector along the, which is showing as the same direction as the vector A, this can be written here as what was the magnitude of A? It was square root of 5, right? So in this case, this will be 1 over square root of 5, 2, 1. So if this value is like this, then let's try to find the uh, is it good? So let's try this one. Minus one over square root of yes. Okay, that's uh, sometimes I might even forget or miss something. Minus one over square root of two. One over square root of two zero. And this is equal. Okay, so I believe this is one over two plus one over two plus zero, which means this is equal to one. Square the phone is one, so uh, yeah. Now, what is interesting is the following. So, if you want to find the the angle between any two vectors, what we can often do is the following. We, so, for example, we want to find the angle theta, which is between vector A and vector B. And uh, in this case, uh, we may calculate the inner product between A and B. Okay, so what is the... Actually, what is the unit length of UB? I think you had also, what was vector D? Can somebody remind me? 1, 3, right? Yes. Minus 3. Oh, thank you. That's, uh, that's 1, 3. Then unit vector along the vector D, this will be 2. 1 over square root of 10, and 3 over square root of 10. Uh, okay. Let us even for a moment. So then, let's have a look. going to be UB minus. Right, so UB, this will be the, the vector UB. And then let's multiply these minus 2 over to the 5. So, yeah, so this is here. 
So if you multiply one to the new this in here, so this becomes, can you help me here? So what is this? Minus one root of five. Minus five root of five. Okay, so this is what we got for uh, A times uh, new B, that is true. Okay, then. Now, this is the inner product between these two, and this one, in fact, what would be the inner product? Inner product is always equal to the magnitude of the first vector times the magnitude of the second vector times the cosine, right? Mm -hmm. So, in this case, this would be equal to the magnitude of A of this, which is what? For the, what is it? For the five. five. And then, uh, what does the magnitude of U be? It's one, right? Unit vectors, they are always uh, one. Oh. And uh, actually, this is a little straightforward. Apologies for that. But it looks like, again, we found out what is the cosine right away. Okay. Yes. So now, it looks, uh, let's, let's, let me try to, to also to remind you what this really means. So A was 2, 1, right? A is no, uh, 2, 1, yes. This is 2, this is 1, and the vector A itself, it's right here. Now, the unit vector along the A, it's a vector which is up to here. So if this is A, this is UA, okay? Or if you have another vector, which what was uh, 1, 3, let's, see, let's have a look at B. Vector 1, 3, 1, 2, 3. <coughs> this is the vector D. If this is the vector D, we have also another UD. So this is UD, which is another vector, which has a unit length equal to, to 1. Uh, yeah. Okay, then I can ask you one, uh, one question, but imagine now, let's try to generalize the situation a little uh, further. Let's assume, and this, these properties of vectors, they are always valid. Let's assume we have a vector C. So let's try to find the angle between the vector uh, vector C and the y axis. You cannot see it? Okay. Uh, is, it, uh, is it reflecting too much? Okay. You see now? Yes. So the question is, uh, this is a, a vector in three-dimensional space in R cubed, and uh, the question is, this vector, it is uh, minus two units along the x, plus two units along the y, and 17 units along the z. So in this case, uh, what would you expect? So what is the direction of the x, uh, y axis? Huh? Sorry? <laughs> yes, but how, how can we denote it in R cube if we are to write it down as a vector in three-dimensional space? But Let's do this one, the two-dimensional space initially. So this is Cartesian coordinate system, x and y. This is the unit vector along the x-axis. How do we denote this one? We denote this point here as 1, 0. OK, right? And uh, we denote the direction along the y as 0, 1. So this vector here, it is 0, 1. Then, in the three-dimensional space, it's not zero, one, zero. Exactly. Yeah. So we have two vectors. 
So one vector is C, the other vector that we can call it vector K, this is going to be actually not K because we have I, J, K, it corresponds, let's call it M. Let's call this M. So M is going to be 0, 1, 0. That is true. So this is equivalent and using three lines with Y axis. So that if we want to find the angle between this vector C and the Y axis, all we do is that we do the dot product between C and M. Right, and we follow the, the steps. We say C dot product with M. This is going to be equal to the magnitude of C times the magnitude of M times cosine theta, right? The magnitude of M is what? It's unity, right? It's one. So in this case, uh, I mean, this is, so let's do this fast. What is C dot M? C dot M, what is it? Can you, can you find it? Just three, right? Yes. Why is it three? Is it minus one, minus, minus two, three, seventeen. This is something like this. Minus two, three, seventeen. 17 zero, one, zero. zero. So once we multiply these uh, in this order, we get minus two times zero, three times one. Okay, that's three. Yes. So this inner product apparently this is equal to three, and this is equal to magnitude of c. Magnitude of c is equal to So what is the magnitude of C? Uh, magnitude of C is going to be minus 2, 3, 17, minus 2, 3, 17. This is equal to minus 2 times minus 2. What is it, 200? 204. Okay, this is 204. But the magnitude of C is square root of this. So this is square root of 204. 94. 94. 94, okay. Times, this is, what is the magnitude of M? Yeah. It's just one, so let's leave it out. Uh, cosine theta, which means that the, let's do it like this. First of all, we say cosine theta is equal to 3 divided by square root of 294. What is this? Yeah, it is. So the square root of 294 is like the square root of 300, it's 1.7 times 10, 17, 16, 17, is it approximately 17? 17. Yes. Okay, 17. So cosine theta is 3 over 17, then angle theta is equal to inverse function of 3 over uh, 17. Because we can apply inverse functions in terms of the cosine, and cosine inverse with cosine, they cancel out each other. So here we have cosine, well, this uh, is theta. Almost 80 degrees. 3 over 17. So we multiply from both sides with cosine inverse function. Cosine inverse, right? And you have, you have studied inverse functions. So here we multiply also with cosine inverse. 80 degrees. Cosine inverse with cosine, 80. they are inverse functions of each other. Almost 80 degrees. 80 degrees? Okay, yes. thank you for this. This is equal to 80 degrees. Where did you find the 3 there? You have 3 is equal to square root of 1. 3 is the inner product of C with M. So we did it here. Yeah. Don't, don't forget, C is this. Is C transpose times M. Okay, times M. Okay, that's good. So we found this on the angle. So we found what is the angle of the C vector with y axis. Now let's find the angle between C and the z axis. What is the angle between C and z axis? We do the same thing. So, first of all, what is z axis? Z axis, it can be vector n, which is equal to what? Zero, 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 one. Zero, zero. That's correct. Okay, so this is how we do it. So then if we multiply C with uh, Z axis, we're going to get right away, right? 17. 17 yeah. So you're, we're going to make this one 0, 0, 1. Yeah. Uh, this is 17. So we just multiply 0, 0. So we get here 17. So let's write the C dot. Sorry, this M. This is, uh, allow me to say that this is wrong. This M, we can write it like this. It's a, because the length is 1, we can denote it like this. So this is also like this. This is C. 
So C dot M is 17. This is equal to square root of 294. So this is a little odd. Square root of 294 is larger than 17, right? 792. Okay, it should be larger because then things will not work out. And this theta, let's write this one alpha, cosine alpha. So this is uh, cosine alpha. I believe now you can find, you can calculate this one. You just uh, say that cosine alpha is equal to 17 divided by 17.1. And uh, it looks like this is approximately equal to 1. What is it called? 90 degrees. 90, well, the thing about this one, is it 90 or 1? Huh? So now it's almost zero. 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 Yeah. It goes, <laughs> sorry, this is one. Because it's in the Okay, so cosine uh, alpha. Let me write this uh, somewhere here. So cosine alpha is equal to 17 divided by 17.1. 17 divided by 17.1. And this is equal to approximately 1 minus epsilon. I mean, it's like. 0 0.999 or something. Yeah. So let's write this one, 1 minus epsilon. So maybe it's better to get used to this language because uh, you're going to be uh, engineers. Okay? So this is almost 1, which might uh, record that this is something like this angle. 8 degrees. 0 degrees. Zero. Huh? Yes, 0. 0 degrees because for size 0 is 1. Yes. But of course, a little, it's not 1. It's a very little bit of uh, out of. So, Plus some epsilon, okay, so it's, it's not pure than zero. This zero, this was one, but it's not one, anyway. But uh, this is how we can uh, work out with vectors. And this is how, uh, by calculating the inner products, we can uh, easily calculate where, uh, how, one vector is in space with respect to some other vector. Okay, and uh, the, so this is three-dimensional space. We can even draw this. We are good at it. But often, uh, when you do data analysis, the vectors can be seventeen dimensions. Okay, I'm not really exaggerating, but it was, let's say seven dimensions. And if you have another vector which is seven dimension, if you want to com to compare if two uh, two quantities are close to each other, all we do is that we calculate the dot product between two vectors which are seventeen dimensions. What do, what do seventeen dimension mean? Seventeen dimension to be any vector a which is uh, an element of R17. Like in the number channel. So you just calculate the angle between these vectors in 17-dimensional space. And if the angle is very small, you might say that these vectors, they belong to the same class. So you can use this for classification, for clustering. Okay? So you might be given some uh, large data set, and you have to figure out, for example, you have to figure out how can I cluster a large data set you, what, all you start to do is start to calculate these cosine angles, okay? If, the, if you have a set of cosine angles which are zero or epsilons, or very small, like 0 0.1, and etc., you see that all of these pairs of vectors, where the angle is almost zero, they belong to the same class, <laughs> which means that we might have some vectors that go like this. Here, 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 here. So once you start pairing them, all of them, with each other, the angles which are zero, you can plus you say, okay, this data, it belongs to one category, this is different category, this is different category. But if you pair this one with this one, the angle shows up to be very large, you say, okay, I'm, I'm considering this one to be to, uh, to be part of a different class. So these principles of the of the vectors and the angles between vectors are very important because often you might have a data set that we need to extract feature vectors. Feature vectors, you cannot put a limit to how large this vector can be in terms of R17 or R20, but uh, you may need to use those to determine uh, clustering of data. And the principles lie in the knowledge of the vectors.